Welcome, welcome, and uh, good morning, guys. Good morning, guys. <laughs> you're like the little duck behind me. If you're a lady, it's all right. We're thankful that you're here, and uh, we want you to just feel free to be yourself in God's house. Of course, most of you know today is our homecoming 2015. Say amen. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord a hand clap. And uh, we only have one requirement here. All the hungry people get in the back of the line. <laughs> Just kidding. We're excited that you're all here. And we're going to have a time of fun, food, and fellowship. And I'm going to try to be respectful and conscious of the time. But who knows what God's going to do in our midst. So uh, thank you again. We are honored if you're visiting. We are honored that you're with us. And our hats are off to you. Just take a minute and look at someone and just one minute and just say, hello, thank you for coming to Thomasville Assembly. Would you just take a moment and do that? All right. So, um, again, we just want to celebrate this homecoming and remembering his heritage and history of the church and reminisce about the good things and the foundation that was laid here many years ago. And my wife and I are still fairly new to the area, but uh, we like to try at the Piedmont, and people are good to us. Uh, I was only 180 pounds when I moved here. <laughs> so they feed you well. So uh, I think you'll find out in just a few moments how good our cooks are. And we thank God. And we thank all the ladies and the gentlemen that cook. Would you tell them you appreciate them as well? <laughs> they cook this uh, wonderful meal. Now, if anybody tries to slip out and gnaw on a chicken leg while I'm preaching, you're in big trouble, okay? Uh, but uh, we have our food prepared and everything. So I'm going to go ahead and get into the Word. Let me have your Bibles today. I've only got one passage of Scripture that I want to call your attention to. And I'm going to develop my thought from that. It's from the book of Psalm 133 and 3. I found if I only speak on one scripture, I cut my sermon short. If I speak on more than one, it goes a little longer. And uh, that's an inside joke, but nobody's laughing, so I'll just go ahead and move on. <laughs> Psalm 133 and 3. When you get there, say amen. amen. Now look at your neighbor. Make sure they're at the same passage of scripture that you are. Psalm 133 and 3, the Bible says, As the dew of Hermon and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. I want to emphasize the word mountain and the word dew. This is where I want to speak on my subject today, and I've entitled this Mountain Dew. Mountain Dew. So I want you to close your eyes. Let's go to the Lord in prayer one more time. Heavenly Father, we thank you as always for the presence that you usher in. God, as we just sow into your heaven, God, you sow back into our earth. We thank you, Father, for everyone that is here, for hungry hearts and thirsty souls. Bless them, strengthen them, keep them, Father, today. Use them greatly for the advancement of your kingdom as we propagate the gospel in their hearing, God, and we're careful to give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name, and the church said, Amen. Mountain Dew. Now, I know most of you here know what a Mountain Dew is, but I'm not just talking about a, a natural drink. I'm talking about a spiritual drink that you can take this morning. I'm not just talking about something that's carbonated. I'm talking about a spiritual drink that will get you elevated. I'm not just talking about something that's bubbles. I'm not just talking about something that has a bubble. I'm talking about something that will get you out of your trouble. So we're going to look today at the mountain dew of this scripture, Psalm 133 and 3. The dew, someone say the dew. The dew is that water or that condensation that forms droplets on every object that it hits early in the morning. You know, it makes me, reminds me of a scripture that says early, Psalm 63, 1, early will I seek thee, O God, because my soul is thirsty for you. I've got a question. How many of you are thirsty for the things of God. You're thirsty to see God do some things inside, not only inside, but on the outside. 
not only in the house of God. A lot of people come in the house of God and we glow in the dark and we worship, but we need to go outside to let people see the light and the moisture of God's ministry, amen, to see the dew of his presence on our life. So it's a very uh, natural thing that takes place, and this is a natural thing that even took place in Genesis all the way through the Bible. But the dew of the Lord is very important because it's mountain dew. It's not just dew in the valley, it's mountain dew. So you can have moisture in the valley, but you can have moisture on the mountaintop. You can have it in the low times and in the high times. So just as that dew regenerates and renews the earth, that spiritual dew comes down from heaven. How many of you think for heaven? You said, Pastor, I'm having a little bit of hell. Well, I tell you right now, you can get a little bit of heaven on this side. Amen? You can have a slice of heaven for the midst of your hell. If you're going through things today, listen, things can happen to you, but don't let things get on the inside of you. You may be in trouble, but don't let trouble get in you. You may have problems, but don't let problems get into you. So I, I want to talk a little bit more about this thing called Mountain Dew from Psalm 133. So number one, what does the dew do? What does the dew do? The dew of God's presence does five specific things for us. And I want to go ahead and jump in and talk about this. Number one, even though the dew is just a fine mist, it oftentimes is enough to start something softening the hard ground. It is, listen, it is, it's a fine mist, but it can soften the very hard places, soften the places that we deal with in our life. Is anybody here has ever had a hard place? You've had a hard area in your life. I want to tell you, Mountain Dew will take care of that. Somebody say Yahoo Mountain Dew. <laughs> It'll do something in your life. Those, those trouble areas, those tough areas, those relentless areas, the dew of God will begin to moisten even the hardest places, even the hardest areas, even the hardest experiences in your life. The dew has a way of going in and softening those hard areas. I'm thankful for that. Before I came to Jesus, I was a hard dew. I was hard in my life. I had hard experiences and hard uh, episodes that took place and God brought me into the place and he softened me up. It wasn't religion, it was relationship that softened me up. It wasn't just coming and doing church, it was becoming the church that softened me up. It wasn't just coming and doing three points in a poem and sitting down or singing three songs. It was experiencing the do of God in my life and the moisture of his ministry began to change me from the inside out. Look at somebody say it's an inside job. See, you've got to change on the inside before you can change on the outside. The kingdom of heaven, the Bible says, is on the inside of you. Jesus said, don't look here or don't look there. In other words, don't look to your denomination. Don't look to a preacher. Don't look to some faith. Look to Jesus Christ, and he'll bring the moistening of that morning air and the dew of his presence will come upon you and it'll change your atmosphere. And when it changes you, it'll change things around you. It will change things around you. So I'm thankful for that fine mist. You can barely see it, but you can sense it's there. As we were worshiping, I sensed that fine mist of the dew of God coming down from the heavenly places and touching my life. And I began to worship God. See, when I come in here, I begin to worship. I try to forget about everything that's going on and just worship God and get caught up in his presence and get saturated, amen, with his anointing and his glory. So that, that dew can start a process for the earth to receive proper nourishment. You are what you eat. You need the nourishment of God's word. That dew can transform even the hardest ground because dew is gentle. How many of you realize that Jesus is gentle? If you read the word of God, Jesus is gentle. The only time he got really tough is with those religious dudes in the Bible. But he's gentle with people that are going through some hard things. He's gentle with those that's going through some hard experiences. And he can even transform some hard heads. Uh-oh. In the church. I was hard-headed and I was hard-hearted because I'd been raised up in church. And all I knew was, you know, you come to church, you don't do this, you don't do that, you don't do the other. It was a gospel of don'ts. I knew what I couldn't do, but I didn't know what I could do. I sat in church and became an unbeliever. But when I met Jesus... I said, when I met Jesus, you didn't hear me. I said, when I met Christ, 
something on the inside of me began to change. And that moisture from heaven began to change. It transformed even this hard head and this hard heart. Now, I know there's no hard heads out here. I'm not going to look and don't, you know, I see elbows flying and hitting your husband. But I'm telling you that the hard hearts and the hard heads can change. Can you say amen? Number two, let's move on because I can smell the aroma of the food as well coming through the door. And I didn't eat a big breakfast, so you may hear a short sermon today. Everybody said, hallelujah. <laughs> Heavenly do provide strength to move forward. It provides strength. How I many need strength? Natural do is, not only, is only produced when everything is still. No heat, no wind, no noise. Sometimes God gets you in the stillness, in a still season, and the stillness of your heart so he can minister to you and speak to you. There's nothing wrong with the stillness of the morning. The best time I can talk to God is in the early in the morning in the stillness when there's nothing moving around. Before I get on my phone or my computer or laptop, I want to talk to God first and foremost. Opening my eyes early, the Bible said, well, I seek thee. That's when the dew comes in the natural and in the spiritual because you begin to receive things that you never thought you could receive. You hear things you never thought you could hear. And you see things you never thought you could see before. So it's the still times. In that cool, quiet of the morning before the sun arises, before people arise, the dew forms on the ground. This dew in the stillness of the morning time brings strength and nourishment to the lawn of your life and to the entire day. Sometimes we need to cut the lawn of our life. We need to cut the grass. The grass is always green on the other side, but they got to cut their grass too. And they need the dew just like I need the dew. What I'm trying to say that when you come to church, it's not just a bunch of rules and regulations. It's about receiving Jesus Christ and coming into his life, coming into the dew of his morning, the dew of his expression, the dew of his presence. Coming into that, it will change you. See, if we will dare just to be still before the Lord, this is a busy time that we live in. The society is very busy. There's a lot of things going on. You know what I mean? That, and we've got the holiday season right around the corner and people out shopping and doing things. Thanksgiving's coming up. And uh, even this morning, it was a busy time for people trying to prepare and cook. And we're so thankful for that. And I'm going to put that food in the ministry in just a little about an hour or so. Hallelujah. So, um, but it's, it's a wonderful time, but it's a busy time. But I think we need to take a season of stillness before the Lord. And get before him. Are you breathing? Hallelujah. See, the dew doesn't fall when it's windy. The dew doesn't fall during a rainstorm. The dew falls when things are cool and still and everything around it, the lawn, the trees, everything in the morning is waiting for the dew. See, when you're waiting on God, the dew will fall. Oh, hallelujah. When you're waiting on the presence of his power and his passion, it'll begin to fall. When you start waiting like the trees and the grass in the morning time, when nothing's moving and it's very still, in the season of stillness, that's when God comes and speaks to you. God speaks to me at the strangest times when I'm, I'm in the bathroom brushing my teeth, not thinking about anything. Or if I'm driving down the road, sometimes I wonder how I get from point A to point B because I'm listening in the stillness of my heart and mind, God begins to speak to me about something that will take place or have taken place or, or it's going to uh, just impact my life. God has spoken to me things two years ago that's starting to happen today. How I many know God's timing is not our timing? And sometimes that prophetic ministry will come in and God will begin to minister to my life. And I'll say, well, Lord, I, you know, I'll just write it down. How many have a prayer journal? I didn't see but one hand and two grunts. Hallelujah. It's good to write things down if God's speaking to you. Now, I don't write it when I'm driving. I make a mental note and get home and write it down. But I'm telling you, God can speak to you about something that's coming up in your life. But you won't know that unless you're in the stillness of the morning of the dew. Hallelujah. If you feel the dew of his presence in your life. So dew doesn't fall when it's hot. It falls when things are cool and still. Isaiah 30 and 15 says that we shall receive strength in quietness and in confidence. So you don't get direction during a commotion. I never get a word from God when everything's you know, topsy-turvy. I never get a word from God when things, I, it's when I get into by myself and get into what we call the prayer closet. Now the prayer closet is not just somewhere you get down. It's not the position of your body, it's the position of your heart that makes a difference. 
and I can get in the stillness of God standing up. I can get in the stillness of God going down the street. But it's, it's when I get my mind and everything off of the commotion and the calamity of the day and say, God, what do you want to talk to me about? And God will begin to speak. Does God speak to you? I had a preacher one time said, you know, I'm, I'm a little afraid of you because you say God speaks to you. I said, well, I'm afraid of you too because you said God doesn't speak to you. I wouldn't want to be in a service where God doesn't speak to a minister. See, it's not about sermonettes for Christianettes that run around with plastic bayonets. It's about somebody that hears from God. The Bible said there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. Would to God that we'd get a sound from heaven again, get a message from God again, get a word from the Lord again, and bring it out to the people so they can spend time in the stillness of their season and receive from God. So just remember it's not in the time of calamity, and com- it's in the stillness. The dew falls in the stillness. Look at somebody say, do the dew. Just do the do. Number three, the do of the Holy Spirit imparts overcoming power. Deuteronomy chapter 33 verses 28 through 29 says, Then Israel shall dwell in safety, the fountain of Jacob alone in a land of grain. Somebody say bread. And new wine, his heaven shall also drop the do and it goes on to say happy are you Israel I'd be happy too because the bread of God has come and the wine of God has come new wine for a new time it's a new day it's a new way and God is bringing us the bread from heaven that heavenly manna feed on something fresh don't you get tired of the same old cabbage every Sunday morning don't you get tired of the same old same old you know we, we come I don't want to come and do church I want to come and be the church we are the church. You know, you didn't come to church, the church come here because you are the church. Point at your chest that I'm the church. Everywhere you go, you are, you are a church and a steeple on top. You're the only Jesus that some people will see, and you're the only book that they will read because you are that do of the morning. You've got Jesus on the inside. How many have Jesus on the inside? You better raise your hand. I'm going to get out there and throw this pointer at you. If you have Jesus on the inside, it will change everything on the outside. I told you I love to get in the elevator. I, I've got to share this again. At the hospital when people are cursing and there's negativity all around, and when I get in the elevator, I like to say, Hallelujah, and watch people back up about three steps. They get so, they, get, they forget about cussing. They forget about the negativity of the day. Somebody said, let the dude just pour out. Let that dew just fall out and just, I mean, ooze out of you and let people begin to be impacted by you. See, you have control over that thing. But when you get into a presence of people, you begin to speak powerful things that God has given you, it'll change the atmosphere. In the Hebrew, there's a correlation between the dew and God's anointing and power and strength. The dew of the Holy Spirit imparts that overcoming power. See, to be an overcomer, you've got to overcome what's come over you. The church, is not a, the church is not a funeral home. We're not undertakers, we're overcomers in Jesus Christ. And a lot of churches have become funeral homes and a museum. I want something that has life in it. I want something that has presence in it. I've quit following the crowd and started following the cloud. I quit following the things of man and started following the presence of God, the Spirit of God, the voice of God. How many need the voice of God in your life to change the atmosphere, to change your paradigm, to move you to another level in God's presence? So you want that do of the Holy Spirit, overcome, gives you an overcoming attitude. See, we didn't come here to take cover, guys. We come here to take over. Well, Pastor, you don't see how bad it is and how rough it is. Well, somebody needs to stand up with the overcoming presence of the Holy Spirit and say, here am I. Amen. Send me, Lord. I want to be an impact to my community, to this tri-county area. I want to minister to the people that are hurting, that are sick, that are wounded. I want to see the presence of God come on people and see bones snap in the place and people's lives be changed and hearts be mended. Are y'all breathing out there? Come on, I'm having a good time. 
I'm moving on. Praise God. I know you're hungry. I hear your stomach's growling up here. See, by the power, hello, by the power of the Spirit in the form of God's mountain dew, we have the authority to dethrone the enemy's plans for destruction in our lives. By the power of the Spirit. See, God has a mountain dew. It's God's mountain dew. It will dethrone the powers of in, the enemy in your life. No matter what the devil has plotted in your life, no matter what his plan or all his plans, all the high places of the enemy can be taken down by those who have been anointed by this heavenly dew. The holy anointing dew that comes from the mountain of God or mountain dew, if you will. Somebody say, just do the dew. I'm trying to get you in that in your mindset. Just do the dew. Number four, we're moving on here. The refreshing dew of the Lord uncovers new supply and reveals new provisions of God's abundance. Genesis chapter 27, I don't have it on my PowerPoint behind me, but it says, Therefore may God give you the dew of heaven, of the fatness of the earth, and the plenty of grain and wine. It goes on to cursed be everyone who curses you, and blessed be those who bless you. This is the blessing that Isaac prayed over Jacob. Now that's powerful stuff right there, guys. The ones that bless you will be blessed. The ones that curse you will be cursed. I still believe that pertains to a new covenant Christian. Because you have, you encompass, you embody the dew of God. You embody the presence of God. I want you to remember when God gives you vision, there's always provision. There's always something God gives you. It's like that manna that fell from heaven. As you know, manna fell early in the morning. That parallels the dew of the morning. In fact, you may find that the manna actually fell upon the dew, which had God's provision come when his dew anointing came. In other words, manna didn't come until the dew had first fallen. Manna would not come until the dew fallen. See, if you want the manna from God, what was the manna for? That was that heavenly bread that, re that was received by the Israelites of that day. But before the manna would fall, the dew had to fall. And when the dew fell, then the manna would come. In other words, if you've got the anointing of God, you're going to have the, the, the uh, if you're going to have the anointing of God, you're going to have the manna fall. In other words, if you are spirit-led, you'll be spirit-fed. If you get into the presence of God and the spirit of God and the, and the dew of God, then the manna of God will begin to fall on your life and begin to change some things in your life. I don't know who I'm preaching to today, but I'm telling you, I know some of you had some struggles, some of you had some trials, and I'm telling you, get into the moisture of his miracle work and power, get into the dew of his deity, get into the freshness of his fragrance. Just tell somebody, do the dew. See, if we want refreshing, if we want the blessing, if we want that heavenly presence, all we have to do is just do the do. Just get into his wonderful presence. Are y'all doing okay? Some of you are smiling. Some of you are like you're scared to death. Hallelujah. It gets worse. I get excited about God. Do you get excited? Are you, are you excited about coming to his presence? I love getting with my brothers and sisters, and I feel the dew of his stillness, the dew of his worship that impacts my life, imparts something into me that changes my paradigm, that changes the way I think. You know what we need to do? We need to get back in the Word of God. I'm surprised at how many Christians that have been in church for 20 years, and they don't know John 3, 16. We need to get back into the Word. Amen. But before we have an understanding of the word, we got to have the dew, the freshness of God. Can you hear what I'm saying? The anointing of God, the power of God, the impact of God, the passion of God. I'm passionate about Jesus. Are you passionate today? Are you on fire with his love? We need a new baptism of the fire of God's love in our life again. Say amen or grunt or do something so I know you're out there. Praise God. Number five. We're moving right along here. The favor of God is like the dew on the grass. It's glistening. Proverbs 19 and 12 says, The king's wrath is like the roaring of a lion, but his favor is like the dew on the grass. I got a question. How many of us desire God's refreshing and restoration in our lives? 
How many of us want the provision of God in your lives? Well, these provisions are the favor of God. Did you know you're God's favorite? That's southern for favorite. You're God's favorite. If God had a wallet, your picture would be in it. If God had a refrigerator, your picture would be on that refrigerator because he loved you. Did you know he's head over heels in love with you? He appreciates you. What a revelation. He appreciated you so much that he hung on the cross of Calvary 2,000 years ago. How many are thankful for the cross? It's by the power of the cross. It's not what you've done. It's what he's done that counts. It's what's changed me, transformed me. It's not my religious performance. It's what he's done by the blood of Jesus Christ and the Calvary that came. I'm telling you, when we get back to Golgotha's hill, Golgotha's hill, the word Golgotha means the place of the skull. Somebody point at your noggin up there. We've got to go back to the place of the skull and renew our mind to the truth of God's word. So the favor means pleasure. It means delight. It means desire. My Bible tells me that God will give me the desires of my heart. Why is it important to have the favor of God in your life? Because when the favor of the Lord is extended to you, you can accomplish things that you would have never accomplished before. When the favor of the Lord is extended to your family, you will have access to the places that you would never had access before. Are y'all hearing me today? How many have the favor of God? We're going, you said, well, I'm going through hell, but I'm telling you, he's over there smiling saying, I'm giving you favor. I know there's people here. I know it by the spirit that you're hurting. I know by the spirit, I can look into some of your spirits and see that you're dealing with some stuff. But don't let the stuff get inside of you. Don't let the hell get on the inside of you. Don't let the pain get on the inside of you and begin to uh, corrupt you. Let the do of God, let the presence of God take care of it because I'm hearing the Lord say from heaven, I'm giving you favor. I'm giving you power to dance on the nations. I'm giving you power to stand up against the wiles of the enemy. I'm giving you power. Somebody say power, P-O-W-E-R. God has given you power to change things. God's given you power to step on the powers of the enemy, to step on the serpents and the scorpions and the snakes. And quite frankly, I don't like spiders and snakes. Have you ever heard that song, Spiders and Snakes? I wrote it, praise God. But something comes on the inside of me. I feel 10 foot tall and bulletproof. I'm able to leap a single, I mean, leap, leap a wall in a single bound when the dew of God, the anointing of God, the power of God changes things around in my life. Do you feel a change taking place on the inside? Somebody say favor. See, we got to get a hold of that word. God is giving somebody in the midst of this speaking today, somebody's getting favor in their life. Somebody's having a turnaround anointing in their life. The business that you thought was going to go down, God's going to bring it back up. The marriage looked like it was on the rocks. God's getting ready to bring it back. The banker that told you you're going to have foreclosure, God's going to bring it around. Why? Because of supernatural favor. The do of God brings favor in your life. The doctor's giving you a bad report, but who has believed the report of the Lord? I believe in the favor of God. Tell somebody just do the do. I'm telling you, it's not just my Indian blood up here. It's the fire of God in me. Amen. Hallelujah. Man, somebody's got the foot out. I'll see you with your foot out in the aisle. I'm getting out of here. Don't leave yet. We're going to eat in just a few minutes. God has something even greater waiting for you than you've never known before. Let me read a poem, and I'm getting ready to close. Everybody goes, hallelujah. And the poem is by an unknown author. It's called The Morning Dew. It says, Alone for hours I would lay in the leaves of my yesterday. If you find yourself in the leaves of yesterday, just listen. It said, And when I was in the leaves of yesterday, and then a nasty wind blew. And the leaves, they began, they flew, is what he says. I was perplexed and said, What could I do? So I ran to the garden. I mean, going back to the garden of God. See, in the Old Testament, there was a man in the garden. In the New Testament, there's a garden and a man. I was perplexed. So I ran to the garden where good memories dwelt, and I began to cry when I felt tears on my shoulders, and then I looked, and it was you. Hallelujah. <laughs> Talking about God. I looked up into the twinkle of the morning dew, and I could see you because the morning dew is a beautiful picture 
of you. Somebody say Jesus. See, God has something greater, something better, something brighter for all of us. And I'm just asking you to do that spiritual do. Go to Psalm 133. Go to the mountain of his do. Begin to drink in all that are thirsty, all that are dry, all that are just tired of church as usual, and you need the freshness of God in your life. That mountain dew of God causes us to move forward from faith to faith and from glory to glory. It causes us to move forward from strength to strength. It causes us to move from glory to glory. We must always be abounding in the greatness of God's power and glory. Let's never be comfortable and complacent where we are. Nothing worse than complacent Christianity. We need to have the dew of God's presence. There's so much, family, there's so much that is awaiting you. Someone say Yahoo, Mountain Dew. Come on, stand all over this building with me. I don't know if you know it, but a miracle has taken place. I preached in 40 minutes. I usually preach about that long, but some people think I preach longer. Can we have...